very much, and uh, I'm extremely pleased to be here. Before I begin, I would like to introduce my colleagues. Uh, on my left is uh, Dr. Tokyo Arp, the head of our tsunami unit, and uh, Masahiro Yamamoto, who is our tsunami specialist. Distinguished delegates, Igor Toth, Executive Secretary of the CTBTO, Ambassador Mazawa, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I am honored to be here to provide a few words at the opening of this very important lecture and also to acknowledge the very fruitful collaboration CTBTO and IOC UNESCO have enjoyed since 2005. Now, I know that the focus here is on the Fukushima study and the CTBTO's role, but I think it's also appropriate to highlight other areas where CPBTO contributes to emergency preparedness. Ladies and gentlemen, tsunamis that hit tsunami prone areas such as Japan, Indonesia, and Chile usually attack the coastal area within 3 to 20 minutes. Early warnings are therefore crucial in order to reduce human casualties from tsunamis. As the current tsunami warning criteria are mainly based on seismic data, the acquisition of high-quality seismological data in a timely manner is essential for an accurate tsunami early warning system. Now, the International Monitoring System, or INS's, seismological network of 50 primary stations and 120 auxiliary stations is deployed evenly across the globe, and each is equipped with the most advanced broadband seismometers. The advantage of using data from broadband seismometers for tsunami warnings is to estimate the overall size of a large earthquake and to be able to evaluate tsunamogenic earthquakes. Furthermore, the IMS data is transmitted by a dedicated communication network, and all IMS seismic stations are maintained by well-trained operators. Hence, the IMS data is generally provided with a very high reliability that is needed in a tsunami warning system. Now, a tsunami propagates over a long distance without losing massive energy. For the first warning and subsequent refined warnings, the use of as many available seismic observations as possible is essential in order to issue accurate warnings and thereby reduce tsunami casualties and damages in far field. Equally important is to avoid unnecessary evacuation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or IOC UNESCO, has since 1965 been responsible for the intergovernmental coordination of the Pacific Tsunami <coughs> Warning System. Now, following the devastating tsunami of the 26th of December 2004 in the Indian Ocean, the IOC member states requested at the 23rd IOC Assembly in June of 2005 for a similar warning system to be developed for the Indian Ocean, the Caribbean Sea and adjacent region, and the Northeast Atlantic and Mediterranean and uh, connected seas. The IOC is primarily concerned with international coordination among nations, while the operational duties of the tsunami warning centers reside within national agencies. Now, also following the 2004 tsunami, IFC, UNESCO, and CTBTO agreed to explore the potential of using data from the IMS for tsunami warning purposes. The provisional arrangement between CTBTO and IOC proved effective in the development phase of the new tsunami warning systems. And in recognition of the successful trial period, an agreement was signed on the 3rd of February, 2010, just two years ago, by Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO, and Mr. Tibor Tok, your Executive Secretary, to enhance cooperation between the two organizations, notably for the benefit of tsunami early warning systems and capacity building in developing countries. Now, as of January 2012, Australia, France, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, Turkey, and the U.S. 
have taken advantage of incorporating CPDPO seismic data into their national tsunami monitoring system. Additional countries are expected to sign agreements with the CPDPO in the near future. Now, the provision of seismic data is not the only outcome of the strength of the CPDPO UNESCO collaboration. IOC and CPDPO have, for instance, also prepared partner me, in assisting Haiti to develop its capacity for seismic and tsunami monitoring. And I certainly hope we will see more of this type of activity. So in closing, I'd like to thank the CPTO for the very fruitful and productive collaboration our two organizations have enjoyed over the past years, and to say that we very much look forward to continuing on this track. So thank you again, and uh, unfortunately I will have to depart uh, as the UNESCO Executive Board is meeting as we speak. But again, thank you for this opportunity.